Today we have a fascinating integral that will evaluate to a very beautiful result. The solution development is pretty quick and quite elegant. And there's nothing wrong with being quick. After all, we're here for a good time, not a long time. Anyway, so the strategy for solving this integral is one simple substitution. And that simple substitution comes in handy quite a bit when you have integrals involving rational functions or and or logarithms of x. So yeah, it's a pretty nice substitution, quite simple, but pretty overpowered if you ask me. So we're going to call the integral i as always, and the substitution I'm talking about is letting x equal to 1 by u, which you can also treat as a sort of transformation from the x world to the 1 by x world. And this transformation takes dx onto negative 1 by x squared dx. As far as the limits of integration are concerned, as x approaches 0 from the right, 1 by x approaches positive infinity. And similarly, as x approaches infinity, 1 by x approaches 0. So this implies that i equals the integral now from infinity to 0. And let me just move this away. There you go. So we have the integral from infinity to 0, which is quite weird, of negative 1 by x squared dx divided by 1 plus 1 by x times phi squared, plus where phi is, of course, the golden ratio, plus the square of the natural log of 1 by x. OK, nice. Now. We have a negative sign here, so if we switch up the order of the limits of integration, we can get rid of that negative sign and make the integral look not so weird. So it's back to being the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 by x squared dx divided by x plus 1 by x times phi squared plus now the natural logarithm of the reciprocal of x equals the negative of the natural log of x. However, if you square the whole thing, then you're rid of the negative sign. So that means you still have the square of the natural log of x. Next up, we plan on multiplying upstairs and downstairs by x. And the reason for that is that you get rid of the x term downstairs in the denominator of a term in the, in the denominator. And the resulting structure is the exact same structure as the denominator of the integrand of the original integral. So we have the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 by x dx divided by x plus 1 times phi squared plus the square of the natural log of x. OK, cool. So this here is the integral i. And this here is also the integral i. So if we add them up, we get 2i equal to, now both integrals are from 0 to infinity, so we can just combine the integrands. And they both have the same denominator. See, that did come in handy. So we have something divided by x plus 1 times phi squared plus the natural log, uh, the square of the natural log of x, and that something up in the numerator is 1 plus 1 by x. OK, cool. So simplifying out the uh, the numerator, we get x plus 1 divided by x. OK, cool. So if you divide or you multiply by the reciprocal of 1 by x, dividing by 1 plus x or multiplying by the reciprocal of 1 by 1 plus of 1 plus x, that is, I hope I did not mess that up. I mean, math is a lot easier than words. So anyway, so you have some nice cancellations taking place again. And you have 1 by x divided by this stuff. So that's the integral from 0 to infinity of dx by x times phi squared plus the square of the natural log of x. OK, nice. So this is a sort of simplified structure for our integral i. And we're dividing both sides by 2 as well. So we have 1 half of this integral. And this is a very, this is a very nice simplified structure because now if you perform the substitution of letting this natural log of x term equal to u, this will imply that 1 by x dx equals du. Okay, cool. So we have the differential element here. And that means we have 1 half times the integral from 
Now, what exactly are the limits of integration? As x approaches 0, uh, from the right that is, the natural log of x, which equals u, will approach negative infinity. Okay, so that's our lower limit. And our upper limit will once again be infinity. We know that the natural log of x is an increasing function. And we have the differential element du. We're dividing by phi squared plus u squared. And we recognize this as the familiar arctan integral. So this implies that i equals 1 half of, we're going to need a 1 by phi outside times the inverse tangent of u by phi, with the limits being negative and positive infinity. So this is cool. So outside we have 1 by 2 phi, and in the limit as u goes to infinity, we get a positive pi by 2, minus now in the limit as u approaches negative infinity, you're going to get a negative pi by 2. So that's pi by 2 plus pi by 2, which gives you pi. So we have this really elegant result for the integral. It equals pi divided by 2 times the golden ratio. Quite a wonderful result indeed, and a really elegant and smooth solution development. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.